Hello, welcome to another edition of Dr. Boosters. Here we have some Dragons of Tarkir booster packs, as well as, um, I only went to one pre-release event, which is on Sunday. Uh, it wasn't a big pod at all, but ended up taking first place, and this is the deck that I used, and I'll go over that real quick. And then these are the rares that I pulled um, at the pre-release on Sunday. Uh, so just to go over the rares real quick that I pulled, in which I used none of them because they didn't go with my Dromoka colors. Um, we had an Outpost Siege, which is from Fate Reforged. Um, this is the enchantment where you choose either cons or dragons. Um, nothing too crazy um, to talk about here, as you guys probably already know about the Outpost Siege. Um, the next one, which is from the Dragons of Tarkir, is the Corpse... Corpse Weft, which is an enchantment for 3 mana. Um, what you do is you pay 2 mana, you exile 1 or more creature cards from your graveyard, and you put an XX Black Zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped, where X is twice the number of cards exiled this way. So you'd have to have a pretty big um, graveyard to actually make this card um, worth it to build a whole bunch of zombies. The Living Lore for 4 mana, it's a blue card. Um, it's a creature avatar with um, the power and toughness as star where when this guy comes on onto the battlefield exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard living lore's power and toughness is are each equal to the exiled cards converted mana cost whenever living lore deals combat damage you may sacrifice it if you do you may cast the exiled card without paying its mana cost uh, the next one, pretty good card if I was playing green and red, but I wasn't, is the Harbringer of the Hunt. Um, this is a dragon with a 5-3 power toughness. Um, flying, of course, because it is a dragon. For 3 mana, and if you use the mountain for this one, um, he deals 1 damage to each creature without flying. 3 mana where you use the green, he deals 1 damage to each creature, to each other creature with flying. Uh, the next one I had was the Dragon Lord um, Prerogative, and this is for 6 mana. Um, pretty expensive if you're playing the limited. It's an instant speed. As an additional cost to cast Dragon Lord Prerogative, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand. So you definitely would have to have a lot of dragons to utilize this guy. If you reveal the dragon card um, or control a dragon as you cast Dragon Lord's Prerogative, Dragon Lord's Prerogative can't be countered. And what the big ability is that you get to draw four cards. The last one that I got, um, the only reason I'm showing this is because this is the only foil that I pulled. This is an Anticipate. I actually think it's a pretty good card for two mana. Instant speed. You look at the top three cards of your library, you put one of them into your hand and the rest at the bottom of your library in any order. Awesome if you need to like top deck something because you need that last win. Um, so to go over the cards that I used, I ended up playing white and green, went Dromoka. Um, but not really too many green cards. Um, this is Favorite Forge card, the Veiler um, Stance. Pretty much what I did was have a bunch of bolster um, to just beef up my dudes. I got um, the Echoes of the Kin Tree, which um, for two mana, um, you cast it as an enchantment, you pay three mana, and you get a, bol a bolster dude. Um, and then I had a couple other um, destroying creatures, and then I also had the ability to bolster um, them when I played that card. Some more bolstering moves, um, a pacifism, which has pretty good art, I think, on this time for the pacifism. Um, and then this card was awesome in uh, Limited, um, Glaring Aegis. Um, it's an enchantment for one white mana. My enchanted creature gets a plus one, plus three, but the big thing that helped me out in a lot of the playing was when I drop him down, um, I get to tap target creature and opponent controls. So, you know, if they don't have too many creatures down, I drop this down. I buff up my dude 1-3 and I swing. Um, then just some regular creatures. I had a first strike bolster um, for 3 mana. Every time he attacks, he bolsters. Um, and then the hidden dragon slayer was awesome to play against those big dragons um, for 2 mana. But then you use his morph ability is why he's a rare. Um, and you use the mega morph, sorry, for 3 mana. When he turns face up, you destroy target creature with power 4 or greater, so that's awesome when you need to get rid of a dragon. Um, he was really good because I had so many warrior um, creatures, the Herald of Dromoka for 2 mana. Um, he's a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance, other warrior creatures I control gain Vigilance. Um, he was just a life linker, nothing special about him. Um, he was okay, I didn't really play him much. Um, he's a monk that whenever I cast a non-creature spell, since I didn't have too many creatures I control, get a plus one, plus one. 
Um, he wasn't anything. He had an Evolving Wilds, which I think is pretty cool art on that guy. Uh, Evolving Wilds, I get it pretty much to search for a basic land, but it comes into tap. Not too many green cards I use. I only had three. This is pretty much a fog for two mana. Winds of Old Sisma, pretty much is a fog. Um, Stampling Elk Herd, this was pretty good actually for five mana. He's a 5-5. Five, five. Um, and for the formidable, which means if you're um, all your creatures that you have, if the total power is eight or greater, you get to use an ability. And for this guy, um, it gives everybody trample, which is great. And then the pinion feast, um, I just destroyed a creature with flying since so many dragons out there, you have to have something to get rid of flyers. And then my only eight dragon that I used, which ended up being the colors that I needed, um, was a four four flying dragon for six mana. Whenever I get a plus one plus one counter, place on another creature you control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on him than during Scale Lord. So since I had so many bolsters, this guy got really big. Um, so now we'll just go ahead and open up these booster packs. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five boosters. Um, ended up taking first place. It was a smaller pod though, um, and we split it at the top. Um, so I got first place for bragging rights, I guess, but we just split five boosters each. Um, so we'll just go ahead and open it. Okay. I'll show mine first. Um, so we'll just go to the uncommons and the rares. Um, got a resupply, grave purge, hardened berserker. The first uncommon is Cal Sisma Behemoth. This is for three mana. Um, he can't attack or block unless you pay two. Um, so what's the upside of him is that he is a five five creature for three mana, but you have to play two every single time. Um, scale blessing is four. Um, I use this guy. He's a bolsterer. Um, Blood Chin Rager is a uh, two mana. He's a human warrior. Whenever he attacks, each warrior creature you control can't be blocked this turn except by two or more creatures. And our un and our rare is a commune with lava. Instant speed. Exile the top X cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. All right, for our next pack, we have a display of dominance, which you choose one. You either destroy target blue or black non-creature permanent, or permanents you control can't be the targets of blue or black spells. Your opponents control this turn. Uh, it's for two, two mana. This is probably a sideboard card. Our next one is Dragonlord's Servant, and this is a 1-3 creature uh, for two mana. And dragon spells uh, you cast cost one less colorless to cast. So if you're running a lot of dragons, you're obviously going to be running this in your deck. And our next card is a dragon. It's a six mana acid spewer dragon. It has flying and death touch. It's a three three. It also has megamorph for seven mana. Um, so you can flip it and when you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. And when it's turned faced up, um, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each other dragon you control as well. And for our rare, we have Gleam of Authority, which is two mana, and it's an enchantment. So you enchant a creature, and it gets plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter on uh, other creatures you control, and also has uh, Vigilance, and for one mana you can pay the one tap it and bolster one oh, that's awesome. so had we had this in our deck uh would have gotten out of hand really fast with all the bolstering going on very good card nice all right all right so in the next booster we have is the savage vent mall this is a uh, six mana total four colors one green one um, red is the flying 4-4 four, four dragon. Whenever he attacks, I can add 6 to your mana pool. Until end of turn, this mana doesn't empty from your mana pool as steps and phases end. That's crazy mana. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the strong arm monk for 5 mana. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus and plus 1. A Minister of Pain for 3 mana, it's a human shaman with exploit, which is when this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. When Minister of the Pain exploits a creature, um, creatures your opponents control get negative 1, negative 1 until end of turn. 
Sorry, this is part two. Um, so back to the Radiant Purge. Uh, for two mana at an instant speed, I get an exile target multicolored creature or multicolored enchantment. Pretty good when you're looking at, you know, this cons block since so many multi colors are out there. Okay, next up we have Battle Mastery, which for three mana, it's an enchantment, and enchanted creature has double strike. Nice. And Salt Road Quartermasters for three mana. Uh, enters the battlefield with two plus one plus one counters on it. And for three mana, you can remove a plus one plus one counter from this card and put it on a uh, target creature. And it's a one one. Then we have. I don't even know how to say this. Salumgar. Salumgar? Okay. Salumgar Spell Eater. This is a creature that's a two three. Uh, for three mana. It also has Megamorph for five and when it's turn faced up you can counter a target spell unless its controller pays three colorless mana. Um, that could be good. Seems a little expensive to play. And we have a Mythic Rare uh, for three mana. Death Mist Raptor. It has Death Touch and whenever a permanent you control is turned face up you may return Death Mist Raptor from your graveyard to the battlefield face up or face down. It also has Megamorph for 5 mana. Um, and when you turn it face up, you can put a plus on plus on counter on it, which would make it a 4-4 four, four Death Toucher. Very cool. Yeah. For 3 mana? Yeah. And we also have an uncommon foil card. Uh, Self-inflicted wound. Target opponent sacrifices a green or white creature. That player does, he or she loses two life. All right. Before I finish this last booster, let me know what you guys, or let us know what you guys think about, um, you know, dragons and Tarkir so far, and how your pre-release event um, went. Hope you guys had some pretty cool pulls. Um, we'll hope we get the big Narset right here, foil if we can. We'll find out. Um, so let's see how this one goes. Also, um, you know, hit the subscribe button if you can, and if you want to see more videos. Um, we'll be doing a giveaway hopefully shortly soon, um, and it will be giving away cards. So, last booster pack. Alright, our first uncommon is the Swift War Kite. This is for 6 mana. Uh, let me get that in focus a little bit. Alright, it's a dragon creature flying. When Swift War Kite enters the battlefield, you may... Put a creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. Your um, that creature gains haste. Return it to your hand at the beginning of your next end step. Then we got a lightning berserker for one mana. Awesome card um, for a one one. Uh, lightning berserker gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. It has a dash ability for one mana. A silk wrap, which is two mana for an enchantment. When silk wrap enters the battlefield, exile target creature with converted mana cost three or less. An opponent controls until he leaves play. And our final rare is a Harbinger of the Hunt. This is what I had in our pre-release, but then I couldn't end up using it for five mana. It's a dragon with a 5-3 flying. And it looks like that is it. So I hope you guys have a good one. Um, I guess the Mythic actually was the best pull that we had um, out of this. No Narset. But hopefully we'll get one in our booster box that we'll be getting when it comes out. Otherwise, have a good one. Thanks, guys. Bye.